Make their Christmas unforgettable with goat guns. Looking for the perfect gift for your husband or man who is a gun lover? Look no further. Goat guns are the greatest gift of all time miniature gun models. They are the perfect blend of quality and detail. From pistols to rifles, there's a goat gun for every collector, history buff, or gamer. Whether for display or for a fun collecting hobby, goat guns will bring joy and excitement to him. Surprise your loved ones this Christmas with a goat gun, the ultimate gift that won't disappoint. Shop at goatguns.com. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Matadru Day about how to manage a bad manager. Mitadru Day, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm excited to be part of uh, your podcast, and I've been uh, listening to your podcast for months now, so it's a great opportunity. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. And we've had a bit of challenge and trouble getting together. We've we've scheduled and rescheduled several times, um, and it's just been, you know, the craziness of life that has gotten in the way, a uh, variety of just completely un unforeseen and, and, you know, unescapable kinds of <laughs> things that have come up. Right, um, but right. I'm glad we're, we're finally able to connect and to have a nice conversation. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about a variety of things today uh, in relation sh- to your uh, experiences as a leader and, and transitioning um, cross-nationally. Um, but I thought overall we could frame this episode uh, in terms of how to manage a bad manager. Uh, the reality is we all have been there. We've all been in organizations where we've had managers or leaders that we've butt, butted heads up against. Um, and it seems like sometimes when you're in that situation, you spend as much time trying to manage up and trying to just handle and deal with the politics and, and the, the messes that your manager or leader makes as you do actually doing your job and doing the work of managing your team. Uh, so we're going to explore, you know, what can we do about that? How can we better manage bad managers and uh, navigate that kind of a tricky scenario? It's a, it's a scenario that so many of us find ourselves in, in a, on a pretty consistent basis. As we get started, I wanted to share Matadru's bio with everybody. Matadru Day helps young professionals to achieve their goals without any stress. He is a vice president in a top global financial services institution with 16 years of experience managing and improving the well-being and productivity of employees. His articles on professional development have been published on the Acoustic Post, LinkedIn, and Socially Desi websites. He also has been featured on podcasts to discuss career management. Uh, it's just a pleasure to have you join me. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Uh, firstly, I want to thank all your listeners uh, for uh, listening to this podcast, given people have so many options to do so many other things. So my gratitude to all of you. Uh, apart from what uh, you just said, uh, my mission in life is to help young professionals from zero to 10 years of experience uh, because there are so many challenges everyone face uh, and you may not have someone to look up to and talk to. So, so I am, I'm happy to be that person uh, to help uh, people navigate career challenges. Yeah, I think that's great. And it's definitely necessary. And we all need to be thinking about our career development and the people we surround ourselves with our our networks, our mentors, um, creating our own personal board of advisors, uh, I think is very important. Um, but particularly when you're in that early career stage, getting outside help, uh, such as Matadru to assist in thinking through the various options, I think is, is very, very helpful. Now, before we 
get into the main topic for today, uh, how to manage a bad manager, I thought uh, you could share a little bit more context about yourself. How did you conceive and execute your mobility to New York from Mumbai? Uh, That's one thing I want to explore with you. And then you you had mentioned in in pre-interview preparation, um, there's this five-minute video that changed your life. I would love to hear more about that, uh, if if you wouldn't mind describing that for us. Yeah, sure. Um, So I have been always working on self-development, maybe last maybe 20 years when I was in school and I always wanted to learn new things, a new application, new tools. So after working for seven and seven to eight years uh, in India, uh, then I had a trip to uh, London and that opened my eyes because I got to meet my stakeholders uh, in person. Uh, and I decided, okay, uh, if I want to be in the banking industry, I want to be either in New York or London or Singapore. So I, when I went back to India from London, I told my manager, my manager said, oh, that's great, but you need to give us a rationale, like why someone in New York or London would like to hire you. So I said, okay, that's fine. So I actually, you know, come up with a business case and it has three sections. First section, like why I am interested, why I'm a good fit. Second, why the hiring manager in New York or London or Singapore would hire me. Uh, And third, how it will benefit the firm. So I had this business case uh, with me. It took me two years after meeting uh, several stakeholders. And then 2014, I got the opportunity to move to New York uh, from Mumbai. And uh, that has changed my life uh, because after I moved to New York, um, I expanded my horizon beyond my own self-development and start helping other people around me or across the world uh, because so many mentors helped me uh, you know, you know in, in my development so so so, so that, that changed uh, my life uh, after I moved here and, and started working with communities yeah that's great and and what about that five minute video um, what was that yeah so this this five minute video uh, accidentally which I, 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 I saw a uh, change my life in terms of giving me clarity on how to be productive. Because for everyone, productivity is key because that determines how much time you have given you have limited time uh, to, to contribute at your work. So what happened one day I, at, at work, I started thinking about I'm in the office for eight hours, but I don't think I'm working for eight hours. I'm working for maybe... 30%, maybe 20% of the time. Uh, and then the mind is going all over the places. So I need something to hold on to or uh, some discipline. So this video, uh, this five minute video, it, it talked about, uh, and there's a question by the, uh, by the speaker asked like, okay, how much time you work? And everyone said maybe 20%, 30%, 10%. And then he said, do you know who can teach you how to be productive? There was a silence. And then he said, you know, you will need to learn productivity from your child. So I was like, what? From, from, a, from a child or like children, we need to learn how to be productive. So that was shocking uh, and surprising. And then he said, the reason being a child doesn't think about what is of the past or doesn't get anxious about the future. So he's always at the present and have maximum energy, though Adults are stronger than a child, but you can never match up to the energy. So you need to come up with the discipline to remove worries of the past and anxiety for the future. Then you'll be at the present and you'll be productive. Uh, so that that was so inspirational. And I didn't know who that person was. So like I, I started you know, watching that video uh, for six months uh, without knowing the name. And then I finally found uh, now my uh, philosophy and spiritual teacher whom I've been learning for the last, last six years. Uh, so definitely I would recommend everyone if you want to be, you want to know how to be productive and definitely you know, watch out uh, for resources uh, like the one uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, and you can find that on wiseforlife.org. Uh, it's, it's about self-management programs. Yeah, I really like that. And as you were describing that pit, that uh, bit of advice, I can't, couldn't help but think about my own children. I don't know if you have children, 
with Tadru. Um, I have six children, uh, aging eight through mm-hmm. uh, s- 17, almost 18. And so they're getting a little bit older past that young child stage. But as I think back, and I still think about my eight-year-old this way, um, they, they certainly, they just move from thing to thing to thing. And whatever they're doing, they're completely focused on it. They give it their full attention, their full energy until they're done or they get bored and then they move on to the next thing and they do that over and over and over again. And yeah, how much time do we waste in just languishing in ruminating on the past in stressing over an unknowable future? Um, Certainly we need to reflect on the past. Certainly we need to prepare for and plan for and be strategic about the future. Um, But if we spend all of our time just stuck in those two worlds, uh, then we don't have enough time to actually do the work that needs to be done in the here and now. And, you know, so we, we need to be able, you know, one of the, I guess my children wouldn't say it this way. I don't know about the the, the video you watched, if it would frame it this way, but I think in terms of com- compartmentalizing, like you do have periods of time where you're gonna, just going to focus on certain things yep. and, and don't allow yourself to get distracted by all these other outside influences uh, and that may mean in an eight hour or a 10 hour workday that two hours are devoted towards being productive and getting tasks done. And then maybe a couple hours are going to important meetings and maybe a couple hours are thinking strategically about the future or whatever, but you, you can break it up and you can then focus your time and energy on what's in front of you right in that moment, rather than having everything bleed together and then nothing gets done. Right. I think, I think past and future definitely have a place uh, to plan our day so when you plan our day you think about okay what is what is ahead of me to do today or or, okay what happened yesterday I think once you are in the execution mode then you can't afford to go back to past or go back to future so I think that's that's the line I think we cross most of the times and it just blurred and because we have modern day distractions from mobile and email so yeah I think as you, you rightly mentioned that okay we can just like like a horse with blinkers just focus on what we are doing. It, it really helps. Yeah. And I, and I do think for the vast majority of adults out there that our human nature um, pulls us towards the ruminations on the past and the anxiety and stress on the future. So, you know, I don't think most people as adults need to spend more time doing those things. We need to spend a lot less time doing those <laughs> things uh, if we hope right. to be happy, fulfilled, productive, you know, all, all of that. All right. So all of that's really great. And I appreciate that background um, to your experience and and some of these things that have been impactful to you. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about how to manage a bad manager. What do you mean by that? Um, Why is that an important skill to develop as we progress throughout our own career? Sure. Um, And now obviously we are talking about great resignation and and different drivers. But before that, whenever people used to talk about resignation, uh, I remember I always read or heard that people don't leave company, people leave their managers. Because your manager builds the culture in the team. And as a manager, if if that culture is not built, then people will leave. And especially this this time where so many people are leaving. Uh, But there could be situations where even if you want to leave uh, you you may not for certain considerations so so i have come up with some ideas where people can approach or think about uh, without you know leaving your current manager so i'll go one by one first is the assessment of your manager you need to understand like what's your manager's focus because some managers are people manager some managers very good with managing stakeholders, some managers are good with risk and control. So if you have a manager who is, you know that he's not a, or she is not a good people manager, you can't expect that person to understand you deeply and, 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 and comfort you. So, uh, so I think that understanding or assessment really helps. And then once you understand that, okay, so my manager is not a good people manager, so let me find out a mentors within the organization who can help me you know, on, on those aspects that my manager is not able to help. So, yeah. And, and, and just along with that, I think yeah. part of it's just managing expectations, right? Yeah. So if, if I have a bad boss or someone I perceive as a bad boss, I'm going to show up to work every day, frustrated, annoyed, 
Uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time, like you were saying earlier, I'm going to spend a lot of time ruminating on the past things that my manager has done to me, the wrongs they've done to me um, and all of those frustrations. And I'm not going to spend time actually progressing and developing myself. And so, like you said, you surround yourself with other people. Maybe your manager's not the person who's going to give you the good feedback or the, the constructive mentoring and, and uh, uh, performance conversations and coaching. Um, so you look for other people who can provide that maybe who you don't directly report to, but can still be helpful nonetheless. Uh, and, and just managing those expectations and then being proactive within the context you find yourself in is going to be hugely beneficial. It's not going to completely remove the negative impacts of a bad manager, or if they're a toxic leader or a jerk boss, it's not going to erase that, but it will allow you to navigate it a little bit better. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, I think once you have the right assessment, then and then and the people react, and you know if you have a nagging manager or a micromanager, you will smile and say, okay, oh, okay, he or she is reacting the way I expect other than, you know, being frustrated. Uh, so yeah, Can I just share yeah, a quick sure, story? Sure, about sure, that. sure, sure. Yeah. So actually, actually just this morning, I, I you know, I, there, there's been this particular sticky issue that I've been trying to deal with um, at the university with my, uh, a leader that I re- uh, report up to. And we've been trying to, to deal with this and I've been trying to get more information and they've been kind of evasive and, and ignoring me. And it's been frustrating. So anyways, I finally get uh, a response that I've been trying to figure out uh, around this issue and trying to get um, information on. Uh, I've been following up repeatedly, no information. Finally, I get a response first thing this morning. Uh, I see it there and and the the leader's still being evasive. They're still kind of ignoring. And, And the whole time I'm thinking my framework is this is super frustrating. Why can't this person communicate more clearly, more openly? Why can't they be more transparent? Why can't they be more forthcoming and more timely in the information that they're providing? And I feel like the issue at hand is exploiting people on my team. And Mm -hmm. I I want to resolve it. Um, And I feel like that's a very important issue from the standpoint of just integrity, that, that uh, there's exploitation happening. I want it to get it resolved. I want to treat everyone with dignity and respect. Now, that's how I'm framing it. That's how I'm understanding the situation. The, the person uh, that I got the email from, he's a good guy. Like mm-hmm. he, he's not try. I have no doubt in my mind that he's not like intentionally going around trying to exploit people. He's mm-hmm. probably not trying to intentionally uh, ignore me. He's probably not trying to intentionally um, obfuscate or, uh, you know, um, be opaque and not transparent. Um, it, he is, he's doing that and it's not helpful, but I know that about it. And I know I have known that for a long time. I've known him for years. And so I know that's kind of his MO and that's what's going to happen again and again. And so I try just not to get too frustrated by it. I do get some, you know, some frustration from it and I still have to push on it because we still need answers. But the, that reframing in my mind and recognizing, you know, that the way I'm seeing it is most certainly not the way he's seeing it. He's not doing anything intentionally to try to um, 
there's no malicious intent, I guess. He's not yeah, trying right. to, to specifically uh, hurt anybody on my team. Uh, that doesn't remove the potential inequities or exploitation that I see to be in place and we still need to get it resolved. But just the reframing of that helps me interact with him better. So my first instinct is to fire back an email, kind of an angry email response. That's not going to do anything. It's not going to right. have any good resolution. It's just going to tick him off, retrench him. He's going to get defensive. Um, and so, but that understanding allows me to communicate with him better so that we can move towards a mutually agreeable, you know, positive conclusion. So that's what we're trying to accomplish uh, I'm not magically going to change him. He's not going to, you know, he, he he's kind of has his, his style, his pattern. This, these are the types of things that he does. And I either choose to, to interface with him and, and deal with it. Uh, or I, I decide it's too much of a frustration and I leave. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So, so I'm going to deal with it. Right. Yep. And my second point is around what you just talked about is around empathy. Right. And, because everyone has like bad days and you have a, we have a bad day. Our manager may have a bad day. And on that bad day, maybe you are in front of that person and he or she said something which upset you. And, and it happened with me a couple of times. And I then started thinking about, okay, what if I ask my manager if he, she is going through some bad phase in her career or something that is bothering her. And maybe that's why she's reacting like that. Um, so again, just taking a step back and understand maybe, you know, if you were in that person's shoe, maybe you would have reacted in the same same manner. So in past, it, it happened when the couple of times I, when it, that happened, again, main thing for any argument is just keep silent, just listen. Uh, and before, you know, you, you, you respond, react. And then I had a discussion with, with my manager in, in later and after, she was cooled down. I said, what happened? Is everything is all right? And then she started talking about something else which was bothering her. And that's how she reacted in, in that way. So I think showing empathy when something like this is happening, when you're, you're, and, and that improves the relationship. And I think that also makes the bond between a manager and employee stronger when you know one person, I mean, if both can show empathy, that's great. If not, like if one person can't show empathy, that take the relationship a long way. Yeah, that's excellent. And I, I agree. I think empathy is super important to be generous with people. Most people aren't trying to go around hurting others. Most people aren't trying to be jerks. Uh, most people aren't trying to exploit or anything like that. So, so just trying to think of it from their standpoint, trying to be generous and trying to have some empathy for where they might be coming from. Uh, super important, right? Regardless of the context for it. Right. Um, the third point is around understanding uh, what's your manager's position in the company as well as in the industry, because I know of a uh, real life incident uh, in, in Wall Street where you know someone got angry with his manager and he lost a job and he didn't get a job for four years because his manager was influential one and ensured that he doesn't get a job. So I think, again, it's, it's very important to understand, you know, when before you react with a strong emotion, what could be the repercussion? And if you, as I mentioned, if someone is vindictive, that can, you know, ruin your career. So just be, you know, smart about using your emotion uh, in those tensed situations. Yeah, emotion, can't, you know, it's an important thing. It's, a, it's an important human characteristic. We all have it. Um, we shouldn't be fearful of our emotions, but we also need to learn to be uh, in control of our emotions uh, so we can recognize what we're feeling, why we're feeling it. We may be completely justified in feeling what we're feeling, um, but that doesn't mean within the, uh, while we're, we're feeling those, those really strong feelings that that's the best time to then further communicate and try to resolve problems or concerns. Right. 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 Yeah. And then the last point is around objectivity. So what happens is that when, we get feedback and the feedback comes to things. One is the information. Another, another aspect is emotion. So I'll just give you an example. My, my manager, maybe I, I have shared a presentation with my manager and my manager told me, Oh, this is bad because your font is not consistent. And this image is bad. And, and this is, this is not the right message and communication. Now, if I, break it down. I mean, there's a lot of frustration and I get can get frustrated, but there was some real good feedback. 
hiding in that feed uh, in, in in that response from my manager in terms of, okay my presentation skill is not great because my font is all over the places my alignment is not right so if you can segregate the real objective feedback from the emotion that will help you develop uh, yourself so again just just to to think about objectively when this situation happens um, even if uh, on the surface it it's bad it is maybe humiliating maybe but you know there can be certain points which will help you to make you a better professional yeah those are all great tips and and i really like it just cuz those are all very proactive things we can be doing within our current situation sometimes we have the option of of moving and, and going to a different yeah. organization and if you're in a toxic environment if you're in a an environment where your boss is a jerk and abusive and and uh you're you have no opportunity for progression in your career then yeah it's it's going to be time to go and and i'm all for people especially in this labor market you have options like go go find a better fit for you that's that's great but we don't always find ourselves in that situation we can't always just make a jump or a move to somewhere else and a lot of times we find ourselves in a situation where we have to deal with the same bad manager for months or years and we either can figure out how to be more proactive about effectively managing that situation uh, or we're just going to be miserable <laughs> and continually butting our head up against the wall, um, which isn't healthy for anybody, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and you never know because you may move from one organization to another because you don't know that your next manager won't be as bad as this manager because that you don't have control and how many times you can change your jobs just because you're manager. So again, as, as you rightly mentioned, I mean, someone is doing something unethical and integrity, I mean, that's a different problem, but all this soft skill issues, I think with, with time and practice, one can easily, you know, manage your manager. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Matadru, it has been a pleasure. I know the time and we're getting close to the end of our time today, but before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, sure. Uh, so people can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, I have a unique name, Mitadru Day. It's, it's one and only in the world. So you can just you know, type in and you should be able to uh, find uh, me on LinkedIn. Uh, one thing I definitely suggest is that when you reach out to me on LinkedIn, it would be great if you can send it like why you want to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, that that uh, that will be very helpful. Um, so yeah, I am available as a pro bono career coach. You can reach out to me even if I can't help you. I always find people who can help you. So as I mentioned, I, my mission is to do help you know, people uh, to improve their self-development. Uh, and just to wrap, wrap up uh, the theme uh, of, of today, like we, we talked about uh, how to manage a bad manager. So it all starts with you. You know, Before we start blaming the world, we need to see what we can do to manage the situation because that's in our control. So, so think about that. And... Last thing I would say, when you become manager, don't make the same mistake because one day or now you may be managing people. So, so again, it's, it's, a, it's also reflect that if you are exhibiting the same behavior as your bad manager, because then your employees are thinking about you as you're thinking about your manager. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and we, we can learn from the modeling of effective and good leaders and managers from what they do. Um, right. We can also learn from bad managers and learn what not to do. And, and so yeah. uh, let's not perpetuate poor and unhealthy patterns, right? So when we move into a leadership role, uh, sometimes, whether it's an intentional mindset or not, sometimes we just think, well, I had to deal with it when I was a lowly employee and my managers treated me that way. That's kind of a rite of passage. And now, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to lead the same way. And it's, it's, that's just paying your dues, right? right. Um, that's not a good way to think about it. And so let's try <laughs> yeah. to, to be more healthy and, and, proactive and positive in our approach and, and uh, change the things that are, are less um, helpful and, and unhealthy. And, and just over time, we can grow and help our organizations become better and better. Well, Matadru, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. I encourage listeners to reach out, to get connected, find out more about what Matadru can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.
the alchemy of truly remarkable leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Make this Christmas memorable with Goat Guns. Get the coolest miniature gun models for your collection. From historical classics to modern weapons, we have something for every firearm and hobby enthusiast. Surprise your loved ones with the gift of Goat Guns, the perfect blend of quality and detail. Shop now and spread the joy at GoatGuns.com.